close your eyes. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this and we bless your name. What a glorious God, a great God you are. Your mercy, the mystery, the majesty of your name. Oh Lord, we pray you descend in a very wonderful way and a definite way for everyone. You get everyone connected with your power in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, what we have never seen, what we have never heard of, what never entered into our minds of the manifestation of your power, of the performance of faith. Oh, Lord, I pray that you effect it in every life in Jesus' name. To the old and to the young, to the smallest and to the greatest. And I pray to the newcomers and those who have been coming before power. Power will come down in Jesus' name. All those things were struggled about. All those things we went elder skelter looking for solution. And there was no solution. Lord, let the solution come down. And I'm praying, oh Lord, that you descend in a mighty way. Destroy all the works of the devil manifest yourself and show yourself mighty in every life today in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus mighty name we pray and everybody said amen i'm looking at matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 and i'm reading from verse 18 matthew chapter 28 verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power. Just think about that. All power. It says all power. And then it says it's given unto me in heaven and in earth. The Lord Jesus Christ, after overcoming death, after overcoming all the challenges that came on the first Adam. And then he came out of the grave and the disciples saw him, the glorified Christ and the risen Christ, the mighty Christ, the majestic Christ. Now he announced to them before he left them, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven with all the angels, with all the spirits in heaven and then in earth. Whatever it is that challenges us here as we are moving forward to obey the great commission and to do what the Lord has called us to do, said all power is given to me already in heaven and in earth. And then he said, go ye therefore. I'm sure you understand when we say, you know, we say something, one, two, three, four, and then say therefore. That means because of what I said in verse 18, because all power, power is in my hand Lord. your enemy doesn't have power that will overcome you or hinder you and all the other things who are thinking about because of this i cannot because of that i cannot i say because of him i can i say because of him i can because of verse 18 all power is given unto me both in heaven and on earth Go ye therefore, and then it says, and teach all nations, and they say, beginning, it says, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And then it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And it says, as you go on, just step after step, and day after day, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. It says, lo, I am with you. He is with me. I said he is with me. I don't know about any about anybody outside, but Jesus Christ in his might, Jesus Christ in his power, Jesus Christ in his majesty, in his glory, with everything that he can be even overcame the grave. And he said, I am with you. Then it says, always, always, when you are here, God is with you. On the campus, God is with you. On the road, God is with you. He will not leave you. Every detail of what God appointed and purposed for your life will be fulfilled to the very detail in Jesus' name. A day is coming, you'll stand on the mountaintop, you look at all the valley behind you, and you'll say, God is a faithful God. He never left you in time of trial, in time of temptation, in time of hardship, in time of examination. It's time of strike. It's time of poverty. In times of need. In times when you have a dream that terrified you. And then you wake up in the morning and Jesus says, don't worry about that. I'm greater than that dream. I'm greater than that opposition. And he says, I am with you always until the end of the world. What have you got to fear? Keep on climbing, you'll get to the top. 
because he says because of this partnership with me this is what i am going to do i'm going to show you two sides of the coin i'm looking at john chapter 15. john chapter 15 remember two sides of the coin this is one side of the coin you know there are some people they go about with only one side of the coin and because they see that one side then they are not able to come to a real conclusion where you get all your data together and you get all those things then you look at everything not just a partial information but everything together look at one side of the coin this is john chapter 15 and in verse 5 it says i am the vine and ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth fruit can i see somebody is going to bring forth fruit there fruit in your life and fruit in your studies and fruit everywhere you go in jesus name and then it says look at this that you may bring forth much fruit without me you can do nothing but that's just one side of the coin i'm going to look at the other side of the coin now you have to put the two together i'm looking at ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 you know that already you know where we're going do you know the road you know the destination, how we get there. We're looking at Ephesians, uh, sorry, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, I'm reading here from verse, reading here from verse uh, 13. Look at verse 13 here. It says, uh, it's like we should re all read this together. One, two, three, go. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. The first side, the one side of the coin, without him, I can do nothing. The other side of the coin is that in partnership with him, if I plug into this power, if I connect into this power, it says, with Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, I can do all things. That time has come for you. know, there are times you just read and read and read, and then pray and pray and pray. There are times you could promises over promises, and then the time comes that the Lord says you've been coaching all the time. Why don't you start doing it now? This is the beginning of a new life for you. The beginning of the realization of this that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The strength of the Lord will be what you will do everything in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you on power through partnership with Christ. Power through partnership with Christ. You come into connection with Christ. You come into partnership with Christ. And there is power, abiding power, ultimate power, abundant power, a kind of power that is irresistible. As you come into this partnership with Christ, power through partnership with Christ. There are three things we're quickly looking at. Number one, immeasurable power immeasurable power immeasurable power number two immutable power when we say immutable it means unchangeable i should be telling you that some of you are you know walking dictionaries and you should be telling me immutable you understand immutable and that power is with you right there immutable power number three is indispensable power i need this every step of the way i need this every day of the year indispensable power you can not deal without this. Come back to number one, immeasurable power through his pardon. Immeasurable power through his pardon. All you need is whatever has gone on in the past, you come to the Lord a minute or two and say, Lord, I'm sorry about this. And then God forgives you. And from that moment of forgiveness and pardon, you, you carry immeasurable power in your life. It, if it has not happened already, it will happen get ready and when that power comes that is a dynamite it's going to blow away and destroy everything in your life in jesus name i mean everything negative i mean everything evil i mean everything that is going to hinder you is going to destroy everything that immeasurable power through his pardon number two immutable power unchangeable power a power that remains every every time there of heart purity. I'm telling you, a pure man is an awesome power in the hand of God. A righteous man is an awesome power in the hand of the Lord. Look at Elijah and look at the look at how awesome the power he manifested before Ahab and before the whole of the children of Israel. Look at Moses at the age of 120. You know, some people, they look at me, they say, you know, you are getting older. I say, why do you say that? Don't you see some, you know, that 
to invite you. Can I spot you out there? And uh, you know, some of you have uh, as much white hair as I have. It's not the hair, it's the heart. My heart is young. I said my heart is young. And you know, I'm still going to get you together. We're going to run together. I said we're going to run together. You know, when we could, you know, Jesus said, the captain of us, he said, on your mark, on your mark, said, go. And then I shoot out like that, you shoot out after me. And then I'm going to pass the baton to you when I run my own course. I say, get it. And then I throw it at you, catch it, you catch something today. Praise the Lord. Because you see, you'll be awesome in the hand of the Lord. Brother and sister, I said, you'll be awesome. You have not seen anything yet. Whatever it is, you know, I had this, it discouraged me. I had this, it's no discouragement. You will run. And you will climb. You will soar up in Jesus' name. Number three, indispensable power of his presence. His very presence in your life. When he says, I am with you. Always until the end of the world. Something is happening already. Let's come back to number one. What's number one? immeasurable power through his pardon i'm looking at mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 i'm reading here from verse 5 mark chapter 2 we're looking at verse 5 it says in verse 5 when jesus saw their faith that's all he needs when jesus saw their faith you know sometimes when we mention faith some faith from people think it's you know faith is something so big i don't know i'm going to get at it look at that word faith f-a-i-t-h it means uh, what is it when he saw there tell me i said tell me father and i together here that's faith f-a-i-t-h father and i together here and you with god you make a majority you will destroy every negative thing in your life when he saw their faith was faith forsaking all i trust him and forsake all the reports of the canaanites all the reports of the ten spies all the reports in that extra all the reports that anybody may tell me all the reports of uh, you know the students that uh, you know went before me in this department i forsake all their reports forsaking all i trust him and when he saw their faith he said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sin be forgiven thee and there were people that didn't understand the necessity of forgiveness the power of forgiveness forgiveness they didn't they need to understand the, the the kind of immeasurable power that comes as a result of that forgiveness so they were wondering how could he forgive how could this how could that and then look at verse 9 it says whether it's is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk but that she may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose. Give me the word immediately. Immediately. Say that again. That's your miracle. You see, once that pardon comes, once that forgiveness comes, it, it, they saw some power in that forgiveness. And it says immediately, he arose. I want you to see something now. How forgiveness and healing are joined together. How pardon and, uh, you know, the power of God, they are joined together. Second, Second Chronicles chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, joined together. You have the pardon, you have the power, awesome power. Imagine power and immediate power manifestation in your life in second corinthians chapter 7 second corinthians chapter 7 we're looking at a verse 14 it says if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn and turn and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven i will forgive their sins number one and that's the pardon right there i will forgive their sin and then what follows tell me out loud i will heal their land he will heal your land every territory that belongs to you he'll heal it in jesus name your daddy, your mommy, your brothers, your sister, healing will come in Jesus' name. 
mental healing in your mental in your mental makeup healing in your con, in your constitution healing in your body healing in your brain healing everywhere you'll accomplish that healing in jesus name you see there's connection between that forgiveness that pardon and the power that rolls all the problems away we're looking at psalm 103 when last did you read this psalm 103 i'm looking at it from verse one bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O oh my soul and forget not all his benefits look at this now who forgiveth all thine iniquities number one he forgives he forgives and i pray that you'll see the mercy of god You'll see the grace of God. Every guilt, every condemnation will be wiped away from your heart in Jesus' name. Because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be forgiven, shall be pardoned. Eternal life will come to your life in Jesus' name. It says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, not some of your iniquities, not the minor ones, not the ones that are not so serious. This one is criminal. This one is terrible. This one, somebody can go to prison for this. All your iniquities, everything forgiven. And then it says, who healeth all thy diseases, the, the forgiveness, and then the healing. Look at Isaiah chapter 33. If you have not marked this, your Bible, mark this one and note it because this is your portion in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 33, and I'm reading from verse 24. It says, and the inhabitants of the land, the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. I will not say I am sick. I am well. I am made whole. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the sick say I am healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. The inhabitants shall not say I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven all their iniquities because of that forgiveness. He has forgiven all the iniquity because of that. There's no room for sickness in your body anymore. If your soul has explained that pardon of the Lord, that forgiveness of the Lord, if your soul has explained the grace of God that brings salvation to all men and is teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly laws and it tells us to live righteously and godly in this present world, sickness, bye-bye. Diseases, bye-bye. Demons, bye-bye. Power connection, power connection. It will be in your life in Jesus' name. I'm looking at uh, Acts of the Apostles. You know, it's just everywhere you have the pardon, then you have the power. You have the forgiveness, you have the healing. You have the forgiveness, you have the miracle. Acts of the Apostles. I'm looking at chapter 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. And we're reading here from verse 18. Acts 26, verse, tell me verse 18. It says in verse 18, to open their eyes, how your eyes are open, the eyes of your understanding. Revelation is coming to your spirit. And when that revelation comes, it's going to roll away all the ignorance of the enemy in your life. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And that's and from the power of Satan unto God, all the power of Satan manifesting in any life will break it in Jesus' name. And then it's look at look at this that they may receive what? That they may receive what? Forgiveness of sins and uh, after that inheritance. Inherit. I told you there's connection between this forgiveness, this pardon, and then what we receive of the Lord. It says, inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Before I jump to number two, I'm going to just read this uh, Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one. I'm going to read a verse 14 first, and then I'll back up to verse 12. Look at Colossians chapter one. And we're not just reading all these things i'm telling you you're right i'm telling you the provision of god for you i'm telling you that once you say that's mine i accept it i receive it it's going to happen in your life in jesus name and then you're not you know going around life you know bending your head and bending your back this old world i don't know what is happening you know sometimes in the valley and sometimes on the mountain and things are hard and things are tough come on things are not tough anymore because the lord himself he has shown his favor over you and 
things are all right. My yoke is easy and my body is light. You'll find it true in your life in Jesus' name. Look at this, look at this. I'm reading verse 14 first. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. We have, number one, we have the forgiveness of sins. And look at the result of that back up to verse 12. Now giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet or suitable of feet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Because of that forgiveness, you become a partaker of the inheritance of the people of God. Look at verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has, what's the next word there? Tell me out loud and has translated us onto the, into the kingdom of his dear son. I, I need to explain this to you. You see, forgiveness also comes with translation. You are forgiven, you are translated. It's like, I want you to think of, uh, you know, the world in two camps. Here you have the left-hand side. I don't mean those of you are there, but I just mean the left-hand side of the cross. They have not experienced Calvary. They have not come to Christ. They have not come to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ to wipe away their sin. They are on this left-hand side. And then you have this right-hand side, you'll come to the right-hand side. I said you come to the right hand side. You come to this right hand side. All the people on the left hand side, their sins have not been forgiven yet. All the people on the left hand side, they still have been the guilt, the condemnation, and the pressure, and the burden, and the curse, and the yoke of their sin. But now, you say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, take away my sin. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. Lord Jesus, whosoever comes to you, you will in no wise cast out. I believe in you. I'm a child of God. And then he forgives all your sin. Raise up your hand. Praise the Lord. He does it. I said he does it. I said he does it. And then immediately he forgives your sin. He will not allow you to remain in the midst of the other people who have not believed in Christ. He translates you into the kingdom of his dear son. Now remember, remember, all the witches are on the left hand side. And when you are translated into the kingdom of his dear son, there is a gulf between you and them. And when they stretch their hand, it will never reach you. Because there's such a wide gap between the left and the right. It's like, for example, now, a policeman in Nigeria, they are chasing a man. They said, this is what he has done. We have his picture. We have his identity. And we know what he has done. We're going to bring him to answer for this. And while they are, you know, searching for you, searching for you, all of a sudden, you got a passport. And then after that passport, you got your visa. And they, they, while they are looking for you, but you are looking for visa, you are checking up, how can I get that, can I get that? And eventually you get to the airport, you enter into the plane, up you go. I said, up you go. And then you land on the other side. And now you are in America or Canada or you are in U.S. or, you know, wherever. And, uh, you know, policemen, they are still searching for you here, but you have been translated. And then eventually they get information that you are now in, uh, is it Toronto where you go? You, you, you are now in Canada. And then as you are there, whatever their plans, even if they wear the uniform, we, even if they come over there, their uniform does not carry weight over there because now you are translated. All those powers of darkness and all those evil people, because you are translated, they cannot touch you anymore. You're free. I said you're free. I said I am free. Once you know about that translation, you'll not be afraid anymore because the God, the bodyguard of heaven, they're guarding you every time. They're protecting you every, because of that pardon. There's protection over you, immeasurable power through his pardon. Point number two now, immutable power. Everybody say immutable power. Immutable power of heart purity. You know, that's, that's what he gives us. That's what he gives us. And when your heart is pure, and this is not that, you know, I'm trying my best to be pure. You know, it's the Lord that purifies us. If you've not got it yet, the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. 
He pardons, he purifies. He pardons, he purges. He saves and he sanctifies. And when he does that for you, I'm telling you, you carry power that you don't even know the length and the breadth and the height and the depth of that power. We're looking at uh, Psalm 51. Psalm 51. And I'm reading here from verse 6. Psalm 51. We're looking at verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with this soap, and I shall be clean. It's not that I'm going to try my best, I'll wash myself, I'll clean up myself. It's God that will do it. He will do it for you. I said he will do it for you. Put me with his soap and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be white as snow. You know, to even be as white as snow, that is something already. But now to be whiter than snow, he will do it. I said he will do it. He cannot fail. He specializes in saving the lost. He saving the sinners. And he specializes in making pure and making holy and making righteous and sanctifying the people that are saved already. He says, make me to know joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out some of my iniquities. Blot out many of my iniquities. Well, there is one I'm still remembering, you know, every time I go to pray, the devil is saying, ah, you be of all people, you want to, don't you remember? Shut up, devil, I don't even remember now. I said I don't even remember now. You know, once I was blind, but now I can see. Once you are a sinner, but now you are a saint. I said you are a saint. You know, you know what you know the church out. You know what they do. The church out there, when somebody dies after the fellow has died, they say Saint Augustine after he dies, and then after he has died, they say Saint Paul after he has died, and then after he has died, they say that is uh, the Cathedral of Saint Peter. But now, are you Saint Olu there, and Saint to be there, and Saint Catherine there, and Saint? Saint William, that's right, you got it. You are a saint now by the grace of God. And because you see, he purges you, he changes your life. And you know, saints don't act like sinners. Saints don't eat what the sinners eat. And saints don't wear what the sinners wear. You know, sometimes they want to challenge us. Why is it you are like this? Why is it you are like that? Why are you not like us? Because I'm not like you. Because I am a saint and you are, you know, they know who they are. And so you are different from today in Jesus' name. And when that power comes upon your life, I'm telling you, once you open your mouth like this to pray, God is answering your prayer already. And then when eventually the time comes and the Lord says, young man, the time is up, you come to higher ground, you are gone already. We call that the laughter. When the saints go, it's okay, I forgot. When the sinners go marching in. Did you ever hear that before? Who are the people that are going to go marching in? When the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I'll be there, you'll be there, we'll be there together in Jesus' name. The power that comes upon the people who are purified by faith in Christ. We're looking at uh, the New Testament now. We're looking at First John chapter three. First John chapter three, and I'm reading from verse one. First John chapter three, verse one. It says in verse one, "Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God." Sons of God, are you there? Something has happened already your sins taken away and the blood of Jesus Christ washing you and making you clean. It says, therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Tell me number three. One, two, three, go. Read that again. For the final time.
purified himself through the blood of Jesus as he is pure. What's the result of that? We're looking at James chapter 5. James chapter 5, after that hath purity, you pray, and I'm telling you, you have audience from heaven. In James chapter 5, I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 16. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be, that ye may be, tell me, that ye may be healed. If you are prayed for, will you be healed? Of course, yes. Look at this, the latter part of verse 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We're going to pray. And the prayer we pray will avail on your behalf in Jesus' name. Number one, immeasurable power through pardon. His pardon. Number two, immutable power of heart purity. Number three, indispensable power of his presence. The indispensable power of his presence. He, he said he will be with us and he is with us. Remember anywhere you go, the Lord is right there by your side. You, you know sometimes that there, there are people that do not know that. They say, but I cannot see. I remember, you know, a, script, a scripture that talks about Balaam. Have you heard about the name Balaam before? You know him? Is your brother? No. no. But, you know, he was disobedient to God. And then he was, uh, you know, going on the way. He was riding on an, tell me, on an ass. And, you know, that ass, as he was riding, he came to a particular place. An angel appeared. And he didn't see the angel. The ass saw the angel. I'm making a point here. And then eventually, the ass turned this way. And then Balaam beat that ass. And then he turned another way. And Balaam beat the ass. You know what? Because he did not see. The people who do not see, they oppose. They beat. Those who see. And sometimes seeing is not how intelligent you are. I remember, you know, in the primary school, when, you know, our primary school teachers and they said an ass, that means we couldn't get anything. But sometimes when revelation comes to the ass, you are better than the false prophet Balaam. You are greater than the, the false prophet Balaam. And eventually God opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw that the angel was right there. The point I'm making is Jesus is there and those of us that have revelation, even if we're asses, we can see that revelation. I can see Jesus is there. He's by my side. I said he's by my side. He lives with me. He goes with me everywhere. And he goes with you in Jesus' name. Now look at what he said. Look at what he said. In this indispensable power of his presence. In Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. It says in chapter 28 verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I have commanded you. And lo, tell me. And lo, tell me out loud. I am with you sometimes. Most of the time. I am with you always. Until when? Until the end of the world. Jesus will be right there by your side. And when you face a challenge that you cannot handle, remember Jesus is there by your side. And you, you know, sometimes uh, those of us who know that, you, you don't uh, limit prayer to the time you are able to kneel down and then you are able to, you know, bombard heaven. Of course, that time is necessary, but you know, sometimes you're doing something like, uh, you know, that's my experience personally. You're doing something, you don't know what you are going to you do again or something. And then you just stop and then you pray and say, Lord, I need your help in this. You are the, you are the kind of the total, the sum total of wisdom. Immediately that thing will come and it has happened so many times and you try to discover Jesus is always there. Whatever problem is there, whatever challenge is there, whatever it is you need solution for, you'll find he is there with you always until the end of the world. What's the implication of Jesus being with you? His presence, his presence, the indispensable power of his presence. Look at Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, I'm reading from verse 10. Remember, he is with you. Say he's with me. Fear thou not, chapter 41, verse 10, I say, fear not, for I am with thee. The same words again that God is assuring you of. He says, fear not, for I am with you. And then he says in that verse 10, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. You are born again, he is your God. 
You are saved. He is your God. You made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and Master. He is your God. And then he says, I will strengthen you. He'll strengthen you. I will help you. He'll help you. I will uphold you. You will not fall in Jesus' name. For the right hand of my righteousness. Verse 11. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. Their power will be as nothing. Their plan against your life will be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Like the Israelites sought for the Jews, and they couldn't find them. You will not find them in Jesus' name. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing, as a thing of not. Verse 14, fear not, that warm Jacob, and ye, ye men of Israel, I will help you. you. Help is coming from on high. Whatever area you need help on your life, help is coming in Jesus' name. And then it says, says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Verse 15, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and they shall be, uh, the hills shall make the hills as chaff. It has happened already. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. What a wonderful promise the Lord is telling us, reminding us of His presence. His presence. It brings in dispensable power. In Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm going to read verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee. Be not afraid of their faces. You know, what, what you have in your heart is greater than what they have on their faces. You know, sometimes uh, somebody might frown, somebody squeezes his face, and there's nothing, you know, behind the squeeze face. And you have Jesus, you have the Holy Ghost, you have the Bible, you have the promise of God, and you have the presence of the Lord with you every time. You will not fall, you will not fail. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Look at verse 19 there, in verse 19. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee. Those words again, precious words, truthful words. For I am with thee. And then says the Lord to deliver thee. Look at Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. And we're looking at verse 20 here and verse 21. We're looking for those words, I am with you. I am with you. Look at this. I, have you opened your Bible? What uh, page have you opened to? What uh, chapter? What verse? Jeremiah 15, verse 20. And I will make thee unto this people a fence breathing wall. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, says the Lord. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. I am delivered out of the hand of the wicked. I am delivered out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of Mr. Terrible, Mrs. Terrible. He will deliver you from the hand. He has done it already in Jesus' name. He will be with you. He will never leave you. Whatever it is you have to do, the Lord will walk with you. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 20. And they went forth, and we're going forth. They went forth, I said, we're going forth. And these were not, you know, lazy people, idle people, indolent people. These were not people that would sleep all the night and sleep all the day. There was something to do. And you get that thing done when you go forth. You'll go forth in Jesus' name. You'll not be wondering, do I sleep more? When do I wake up? You wake up and then you go forth. And as you go forth, the presence, the power of the Lord will go with you in Jesus' name. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And they performed everywhere. The Lord walking with them. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Give me the last word there. 
That amen is fulfilled in your life. Why don't you stand up now? Stand up now. Know that you know you are surrounded with power within, power around, power on top of you, power beneath you, underneath you are the everlasting arms. And you understand that because of the presence of the Lord, because of partnership with the Lord, you are now going from strength unto strength, from power, from glory unto glory. You tell the Lord what's your need today. If you are forgiven, just praise that there's awesome power because of the forgiveness. If you have not been forgiven yet, just tell, oh Lord, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that. I believe in Jesus who died for me. He took all my sins away. And the moment you believe on Jesus, that forgiveness is guaranteed. He will never reject anyone that comes to him. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I come and that forgiveness already is sealed by the blood of the Lamb. And then he wants to purify your heart because there's so some power in heart purity. Oh Lord, I receive that. Lord, I receive that. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All the Adamic nature, everything that the first Adam brought into your life, the blood of Jesus will cleanse everything away. It'll wash you as white as snow. It'll wash you whiter than snow. And now the presence of God with you, the presence of Christ with you, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Therefore, we boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man can do unto me. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm victorious, you'd say. Amen. You are victorious in Jesus' name. Before we pray, I just want you to understand that all the programs of your life will be fulfilled. All the, don't, don't worry about the resources and, you know, who will do this and who will do that. The Lord is on your side. The Lord is on your side. You know, it might appear, you know, I'm wondering how will this happen? How will this happen? It is settled in heaven already. You are not an accident. And you are not here at this time by accident. The Lord has a plan for your life, a purpose for your life, and that plan will be fulfilled. You know, Joseph had told, uh, you know, his brothers, and he said, you know, the, the plan of the Lord for me, he said, uh, the plan of the Lord is revealed in the sun and the moon and all the stars. They're bowing down to him. They say, what? They say, we're going to kill that dream. Nobody can kill the dream. And they were going to kill the dreamer. Nobody will kill the dreamer. You know, it's a, you know, it's a long story. And then they sold him to the place where the dream will be fulfilled. Where the people are pushed you. They push me to this. They push me to that. Where they push you, that's where the dream is going to be fulfilled. Eventually, there was famine. And then they heard that there was food. So they didn't know who was in charge there. You will be in charge. And then they came and they, they said, uh, from where are you? Oh, they said, your servants. Your servants, your servants are from such and such a place. And they say, how about your father? Oh, your servant, our father. And they, they themselves confessed eventually. And then eventually he gave them food and gave them money. He said, money is no problem now. Food is no problem now. You will give them. You will feed them. And eventually when uh, you know, they came the second time, they said, I'm your brother Joseph whom you sold into Egypt. What was said will not happen as happened. And I'm telling you, what is said will not happen, will happen. What is said will not happen, your life will happen. Raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the confirmation that that brother, that sister, everyone here, what the people of the world said will not happen, will happen in Jesus' name. The power of your presence, the power of your pardon, the power of your purity. Oh Lord, put it on every one of your children in Jesus' name. Cut away that word impossibility from our mouth. Cut away that word, uh, you know, curse and yoke and whatever away from my mouth in Jesus' name. Make it happen. Make it happen. I pray, Lord, any disease on the body of any of your children here that will hinder their progress, cut off that disease from their lives in Jesus' name.
any negative dream, any negative thought, any negative idea that will not make your own purpose, your own plan to happen in the life of any of your children here. Destroy that work of the devil in Jesus' name. Lord, as your children go for us, go with them. Let your power go with them. Let your authority go with them. And whatever you have purpose and plan in their lives, that the enemy said will not happen, we are firm and confirm. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. You are a daughter of destiny. You are a son of destiny. A child of destiny. It will happen. Confirm it in every life, Lord. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. It has happened.